But right now, I think it is time to move forward and talk about our presenter. He's going to be talking on a subject called eNotes, Integrating Course Content with Soft Chalk. But let me tell you a little bit about Derek first. Uh, Derek received his uh, PhD in biomolecular chemistry from the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And he served as a full-time faculty member at both Broward College and where he is now at Raritan Valley Community College. His interest in instructional technology was spurred by a desire to, to reach students outside the four walls of the lecture hall. In addition to soft chalk, Derek utilizes other instructional technologies like Camtasia Screen Recorder to record virtual lectures, BP Works to host classroom wikis, and Poll Everywhere for instant in-class assessments. And of course, um, with version 6, there's even going to be more ways to poll uh, through the soft chalk uh, product. So I am going to now, um, just before I turn this over to Derek, I have three more questions to ask you. And they're really important in terms of the kind of material he's been presenting. So you'd like to know how you deliver your course components. Uh, do you use a learning management system? Uh, do you have a faculty web page or, or file server? Do you burn it to a CD or put them in lab computers? Are you a live teacher? This is a multiple answer question. So you can click on as many of those options as you want. Or is there something else you do? Or maybe you are not an educator, not at least a um, currently a uh, teaching. So um, you're in a support mode. So that could be the other. So I'm going to give you just a moment, get because most of you have voted already. Let's do this as quickly as we can. And I'm going to close the poll, because I think we've got a really good sampling, and share the results. And interesting, you are right on target as, a, as, our, as, as our client base. Eighty-some percent are using a learning management system, and that's exactly what you do here. Since it's multiple answer if you do, you know, there's a, half of you also teach live in the classroom in addition to having an online learning component. So this is a good piece of information. I hope Derek is taking it in. Second question, what kind of material components do you provide your students, whether it's live in the classroom or um, uh, online? Do you provide PowerPoint presentations, uh, lecture notes, a list of relevant links, animations or videos? And Derek, you may want to jump in here and sort of get to the root of what you're trying to get with this question. Certainly, uh, Steve. Uh, first of all, thank you, everyone, for coming today. Uh, what I'm going to try to show today is how we can use soft chalk to, to deliver this as one nice package. And so what I'm trying to get a sense of are what are some of the things you're trying to deliver and how you're trying to deliver them. So the last question dealt with your mode of delivery. So now I want to get a sense of what you deliver. OK. And unsurprisingly, almost 100%, 96%, use PowerPoint presentations in one way or the other. So, and then the others are very high. Interesting that animations or videos are over 80% of our audience. So really an interesting question. So, and the last poll, and Derek, I'll let you address this. All right, so last, last part of this is how are, how are you assessing your students? Uh, do you just assess your students if you have an in-face class? Do you uh, just assess them? Uh, in, uh, in person, do you have online assessments as part of your course? And I, and I want to show how you can do some assessment through soft chalk today. So that's the reason I'm asking the question. And so far, with about three quarters of them of you voting, uh, over 90% are doing some elements of online assessment. I'm going to close the poll because I want to get started and say almost 90% are doing online assessment. Excellent. Derek, I'm turning it over to you because you've got lots to talk about. Take it away. All right. Thank you, Steve. All right. Again, thank you, everyone, for coming to uh, the webinar today, talking about eNotes integrating course content with soft chalk. Uh, my goal today is to try to reach everybody. So I'm going to talk a lot about how you can use your soft chalk if you're an experienced user, how you can integrate a lot of your materials uh, easily. I'm going to show some of the less experienced users how uh, you can use some of the tools within SoftChalk to create these professional looking e-notes. Uh, 
So now, before I get started, I just wanted to give you two references which I'm going to refer to uh, in my talk here at the brief introduction. And it, both of them have to do with faculty adoption of educational technology. As much as we would like to think uh, 10 years ago that e-learning was going to transform education, uh, studies have shown over the last 10 to 13 years that a lot of faculty have been resistant, that it hasn't made the kind of impact that we thought it would. And I'm going to try to show you today how soft chalk can allow us to come over, uh, get over some of the obstacles which we face as faculty members. So as we just talked about, a lot of the useful technologies that are available are being underutilized. Now, when you think about adopting educational technology, here's a nice figure from the uh, Zellweger paper about faculty adoption of educational technology. Now, at the, at the forefront of any of this is the amount of time it takes for an individual to uh, put together good instructional uh, uh, resources uh, from a technological standpoint. So that time commitment uh, really is split up into two parts. First of all, you have to become comfortable with the technology. So you have to develop some competence. And then once you develop a, a comfort level with that technology, you have to be able to integrate it into your classroom and have it really work for you. I mean, it's one thing to say I use instructional technology. It's another thing to say I use instructional technology well. So there's a certain amount of time that you have to commit into doing those two things. Now, certainly some colleges offer incentives, so you may get release time, you may get a stipend uh, uh, to create a course. But most of the time I would say that uh, most faculty have to find that sort of inner drive in order to uh, commit this time. And so it's the idea of being an innovator, trying to uh, expand your teaching repertoire, or even just wanting to enhance student learning. All of those are individual uh, reasons why we would want to adopt uh, uh, instructional technology. Then once you adopt it and you try to integrate it in the curriculum, then you have this experience both from a teaching standpoint, and students have that learning experience, and certainly how trustworthy is the software, how, how trustworthy is the network you're using is certainly going to have an impact on that experience. What I hope to show you today is that soft chalk, first of all, the time commitment. Uh, learning soft chalk is rather straightforward. I found the time I've spent in trying to learn the basics actually was, was much less compared to other technologies. The other thing is I've had great success in integrating it into my course. So I found it to be reliable. And certainly, that's going to enhance my experience in using it in the classroom and also enhance the student uh, experience in learning the material. And then last, in any adoption of technology, you reflect on how well uh, uh, the experience was for both students and also from a teaching standpoint. It often uh, is said that negative peer experiences often shape our reflections or shape our uh, uh, views about different technologies. And so a lot of faculty are hesitant to adopt these technologies due to those negative experiences. So what we're going to try to create today, and hopefully that's why you're here, are positive experiences, sharing my own story with you. And hopefully then that will motivate and provide that uh, 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 motivation to spend the time needed to use this technology. Now, as the uh, uh, previous poll suggested, PowerPoint and learning management systems are two of the most commonly used instructional technologies that we have today. First, let me just briefly address PowerPoint Presenter. You know, PowerPoint Presenter is essentially a clip art program. It's a slideshow, right? And it was originally adopted because on a whiteboard it's very difficult for me to draw, let's say, a mitochondria and a lot of the membrane embedded proteins. So what PowerPoint allowed me to do as an instructor is to show a picture of the mitochondria and then through a lecture really sort of build on uh, uh, student knowledge. The problem with PowerPoints, and we're all relying on PowerPoints, but the problem with PowerPoints is they're really not interactive, right? It's a one-way delivery system where I'm delivering images, maybe some bulleted text, but it often lacks the depth that a student requires for understanding a given topic. Here's a nice example of one of my uh, particular PowerPoints. And if I just sort of uh, slide through here, what you see is it's a series of pictures with some uh, 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 just very general wording associated with it. Now, one of the things or one of the complaints I often hear from online students is my online class is simply just a PowerPoint with some pages to read and maybe some links. 
And so one of the uh, driving forces for me to build these e-notes is to get away from this one-sided exchange of information with students. By creating these e-notes, now I can make a more dynamic document in which students can actually interact with. So we're going to see some of that interactivity today uh, in this presentation. So next, uh, I'd like to uh, talk a little bit about learning management systems. Now, learning management systems are essentially file management systems, right? And you can upload your materials so you can collect and manage and share materials whether they be papers or relative web links, uh, multimedia files, lecture notes, certainly uh, can be delivered through a learning management system. But what I think has happened and what studies have shown is that learning management systems have created uh, uh, this environment in which professors or faculty members often just upload their existing courses, their traditional materials that they hand out in class, they upload to this learning management system. And online learning is a bit different than traditional learning. And so again, one of the other driving forces for me in using SoftChalk is try to get past this uh, simply just sharing files and information and now trying to make it more of a learning experience. So here's a, a, t a typical online class, or here's an online class that I uh, uh, adopted uh, when I uh, came to my present institution. And here, uh, my computer is uh, locking up. But here we can see sort of the basic layout of an online course. Here we have a series of instructions. This is week five. We give them the bio, uh, uh, the PowerPoint presentation on the biotech industry, as we can see here. And then as uh, we begin to scroll down, we give them a series of reading assignments uh, that we would like them to, to carry out over the week or whatever that period of time is for your course. And in addition, then, we see here, so new drug development process, background information on clinical trials. We also provide activities where they can go into the LMS, carry out those activities, and then we have a series of discussion topics as well. Now once the students carry out those activities and those discussion topics, then we give them relevant websites in which they can click on and they can go explore a certain topic. But one of the things when you look at this course is there's no continuity, right? There's no continuity between the information in the PowerPoint, the information in the, in the relevant, uh, relevant links, and the assigned reading. So now in thinking about this, we often as faculty don't uh, maybe get the proper uh, training or maybe they don't have uh, the support or maybe they just don't have the time to try to make this a more cohesive product. And so that's where eNotes really I think fit in well to either an online course or a traditional course. So what I'm going to show you today is I've created eNotes using SoftChalk. They're going to allow uh, an instructor to personalize the content and allow them to deliver this as one nice, neat package. So you have learning objectives, your PowerPoints, your lecture notes, any animations, links, articles, polls, and assessments. So the outline of my talk is as follows. I'd like to give you an overview of a, uh, an existing set of e-notes that I've created for a hybrid microbiology course. And then once I go through the rationale, how I put them together, what I think are uh, useful tools, I'm then going to go into SoftChalk and give you a demonstration on how I've constructed some of these elements. So if you don't mind, I'm going to escape out of the PowerPoint and then go to an example here. So this is an example of, of, of uh, a topic that I'm covering actually currently in my microbiology class. Now the first thing I want to point out is this. If you look at the title here, what I've done is I've combined two chapters. So chapter 14 of our textbook deals with infectious disease and epidemiology. Chapter 15 deals with pathogenicity. Now if I'm just going to assign pages to read in a textbook, students are going to see this as two separate chapters, right? But by creating these e-notes, I can bring information both from chapter 14 and chapter 15 and synthesize them into a cohesive story. So that's part of that personalization process that I talked about before. So here's a basic layout of, of the e-notes as I construct them. First and foremost, we know pedagogically speaking, it's very important you supply students a, a set of learning objectives, right? By the time you're done with this learning module, here are, here's the material you should know, right? So I always provide those learning objectives, and oftentimes they're supplied by the textbook company. So that's not, not even necessarily a, a tremendous input of work on your part. You can modify, take out some, add some as you wish. Now here's one I've been struggling with, but I've decided uh, to include in my e-notes, and those are the PowerPoint presentations. 
Now, interestingly, you know, WebCT allows you to upload your PowerPoint either as a PPT or maybe if you want, uh, you can upload it as a PDF. But what I've done here is I've actually converted my PowerPoint presentation to a flash file using iSpring uh, Free uh, Presenter. So this is free software which allows you to take your existing PowerPoint and simply make it into a flash file. And SoftTalk allows me to easily integrate these flash files into my eNotes. And now if students like, they can cycle through the PowerPoint that we would have in the traditional lecture or the PowerPoint uh, via an online lecture, and they can cycle through. But again, I don't want to stop here, right, because I don't feel this is as interactive as I would like, although enough students asked for it that I made it available. So those are the first uh, set of materials that I uh, provide my students. Now comes the core content. What I'm going to show you today, if you haven't used it already, is that if you can use Word, you can use Soft Chalk Lesson Builder. I mean, it's that easy, right? I can create these HTML documents and I can format them, I can insert links, et cetera, images in a fairly straightforward manner. So for example, here's the first page of, uh, uh, of my eNotes addressing the principles in, uh, of disease and epidemiology. Now a few things I'd like to point out is I wanted to take these lecture notes and make them more than just text, right? So I wanted to make this more dynamic. So first I've, I've included things like text poppers. So as they're going through in order to highlight important uh, vocabulary terms for this chapter, or if I've included a vocabulary term from a previous chapter. Now this allows a student to uh, review knowledge they've already had or take note of knowledge that they should be acquiring as they're studying. Right? So now if this was a Word document, they would be forced to either go look up that answer or I would hyperlink out to the web maybe to define the word pathogenic. Right? So text poppers I think create that interactivity that I was looking for. In addition, now I can hyperlink to articles. Now we saw that with WebCT, right? We saw a list of relevant articles, but there was really not a lot of context there. So by creating these e-notes to include our hyperlinks, what that can allow me to do now is give the uh, uh, article meaning. So I can let them know this is what it discusses, here's what you're going to look for. I've already set it up with the beginning paragraph of of the context of which that article fits. So now instead of a series of links, now I've created a more, uh, uh, I think, interactive way to, to, to deliver these links and to give the students, and give those links meanings uh, to the students. I've also hyperlinked uh, relevant images and tables. So as students click on, for example, table 14.1a is a table from their textbook, and they can start to read about the uh, representative normal flora that inhabit the human body, right? Again, uh, not just delivering it via PowerPoint, but delivering it with text that gets into more depth. And then you can see I can easily organize my images. So here are three uh, supplied images that refer back to the text. Right? So I think, as you can see already, it's taking that Word document that contains your lecture notes. It's taking the PowerPoint that includes your images. It's taking the links that you have in your WebCT course and now it's bringing those things together. As we start to scroll down this particular page, you can also include a video, as most of you are well aware. So here's a video that does a much better job explaining a topic than I would. Right. So I can simply have the students listen to that video and start to think about when do we start to pick up these normal flora, when do we start to become colonized by bacteria and other microbes from the environment. And so now as they're reading through, now they can watch the video and reflect on what they just read. And again, I think this is important. If I deliver the movies and animations in a separate section in my learning management system, again, I don't always give those context. But now by integrating them directly with the images and with the text, now I'm having them build a story. Uh, let me yeah. in interrupt for a moment, Derek. Yes. We, we weren't seeing the video, and I just want to let people okay. know that the bandwidth of the go to meeting, go to webinar system we're using is limiting some of the, t often the video that can come across. So okay. there, there really was a video there, just we weren't seeing it because we're watching his screen using this go to webinar process. I apologize for that. Sorry, everybody, for that. 
Uh, here's another example. So I, I found this nice article that talks about a hospital-acquired MRSA infection. And, and that really fits in nicely when we talk about opportunistic pathogens. So what I'm able is to link out to that article, which I cer certainly think, I hope, or at least I hope, the students will follow. But I also can take select quotes, and now I can talk about those quotes and fit it into the context of the material we're presently learning about. So again, I think that's more powerful than just, again, supplying links and supplying important articles, but now allowing the students to sort of understand how that article fits in to the bigger picture. So as we start to move through other things I, uh, I've tried to integrate in these e-notes are ways that students can assess their understanding. So taking a study break, if you will, which is very popular in textbooks these days. So here's a nice example of a particular topic that students struggle with. That's a, the idea of infectious dosage. So the ID 50 represents the infectious dose in which 50% of the population will show signs or symptoms. And so what I allow the students to do now is I allow them to test their knowledge. So based on the ID 50s that I've provided for uh, a bacillus anthracis infection, which form is easiest to uh, uh, contract. So now students can reflect on what they just learned. They can choose their answer, which they think is most appropriate. Let me click B, and let's check our answer. Now it just so happens that's the incorrect answer. So now here's a teachable moment for me. By using the quiz popper, I can now provide feedback for the student. So now they've tested themselves, they've gotten it wrong. Now I can explain why they got it wrong. So now that gives me the interactivity and that feedback that you don't normally get in an online uh, environment, especially if you're just delivering the question via PowerPoint, right? It's very difficult to respond in that manner. So I find those uh, 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 quiz poppers to be quite useful. And then as you go through, I'm going to talk a little bit about how you can take animations. Of course, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it due to bandwidth, but how you can embed animations and wrap text around it yep, and really make what one. I think is a professional looking document. Right. So now what I would like to do uh, uh, is, is go through a little bit of how I've uh, uh, constructed this within SoftChalk. I would encourage if you have a question on, on how I've put this together, I don't mind if, if Steve, you feel a question is relevant, please interrupt me. Uh, I'd be happy to answer those questions. So let's, okay, let's look at what this lesson would look like now in SoftChalk. All right, so here it is. Now the first thing I'll tell you uh, uh, is that I like to use tables to set up all my uh, uh, content that I create in SoftTalk. And I'm going to show you why I prefer uh, those tables here in a minute. One of the things that's important to me, and if I could go back, not to keep flipping screens here, one of the things that's important to me is for students to be able to, to take this with them, not only electronically, but if they want a hard copy, I want them to be able to print off this hard copy and and be able to use this almost like a, uh, a, a, a mini book or a, a, a set of hard lecture notes. And so it's important to me that when they print it off, they get a, a, a cohesive and, 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 and pleasing to the eye a print off. Now, certainly, we have the print off screen. And let me hit that first. Now, this is one way for students to print it off. And you can see that all the text is there, et cetera. One of the things I don't like about this option is every table that I've inserted uh, uh, appears on the screen. And also, they have to print every, every screen as well. Maybe they don't want to print off every page from those e-notes. So in order to, to make it a more seamless document, I tell my students, I instruct them to actually use their print function within Internet Explorer. So let me show you quickly how that's done. You can go up to Print Preview. From Print Preview, you notice right now that we have the same issue. Everything is in a frame. You can actually see the scroll bar here. But if you have your students select all frames individually, now what you can see is you lose those tables. And now they can print off uh, the document as it appears on the screen. Now I'm going to show you how you set this up in a minute, because it's actually not as straightforward as it looks. And so now that gives the student an option. Say they want to uh, print off just page 3. They could print off page 3 without printing off every other page in our learning module. So in order to do that now, what I do is I set uh, uh, everything up to tables. Now one of the issues I've run into is resolution. 
This is one of the hidden dangers of, of using uh, uh, online uh, materials. Is when I first started to work uh, making these modules, I was working at a resolution of 1440 by 900. So that actually gives me quite a, a lot of room on my screen in which to work. So I would, wor I would make these e-notes early on in, in, in my adoption of these e-notes. I would make the e-notes. And it turns out the students were logging on, and as they tried to print off the e-notes, everything on the right-hand side was getting cut off because they were working at resolutions smaller than 1440 by 900. So the first thing I did is I changed my screen resolution. I changed my screen resolution uh, somewhere around 1,000 by 700, roughly, and certainly that resolved some of those problems. But the other thing is I set everything up in tables. Right, and I'm going to show you how to do that in a second. So if you look at all of my content, it's all framed within a large table. And by doing that now, when they print it off using the print preview, select individual frames, now what you'll see is they're able to print it off without having any of that text cut off. So I feel that allows some students who don't like the scrolling, who like to still highlight their documents. A lot of my students are non-traditional. So these are returning students. So they like to have these hard copies they can actually print off those hard copies to mark them up, uh, et cetera. But what you can see, first of all, is I use tables. Here's my PowerPoint lecture, just uploaded as a flash uh, movie. Here's something else I think is important. When inserting images, I'm going to show you how to insert images today. Now, certainly, you can just simply go to the Insert Image function and insert that in. And you can choose to line it up at left, center, or right. The problem is you can't line up multiple images like I have here. So here's another use of a table. So I've actually put in a table with three columns. And then within each cell, I've actually inserted a unique image. And then by manipulating the sizes, et cetera, I can make that uh, a cohesive uh, set of images embedded within a table that can be now all presented in one row. Right? And I think while that seems subtle, this is very difficult to do if you try to just use the uh, insert image function. Right? So as we go down, here would be the place in which I've put in my movies. Again, using tables to organize. I inserted uh, my movies here. I want to go down a little bit, not to uh, uh, go too fast here. I want to go down to, to some of my um, assessments. Oh, before I do that, I think it's very important. So I always and my e-notes with a series of references. Now, the reason I do that is this. Let me pull up my uh, notes here. All right. Now, I often hyperlink to images within the text. Right. But let's say someone prefers to print it off. By using references now, what they can do is as they're reading, if they come along portals of entry, they can click on that reference and now look at the image as they're reading. Secondly, as they're going through, if they miss a particular animation or if they miss a particular hyperlink. Now, by using uh, uh, references, now they can easily find maybe what they missed. So, so they can review uh, relevant animations, videos, articles, etc. I'm also going to show you how I use uh, uh, case studies in my class. And I think this is really important. It's very easy to set up online assessments using multiple choice questions, true or false. What about open-ended questions? Can I use uh, these online assessments for essays? And I'm going to show you today, yes, you can. Here's an example of a case study in which I've inserted a quiz popper uh, uh, using uh, an, an essay or a paragraph function. So that's what the e-notes look like in my uh, soft chalk as they're presently constructed. So you can see in this uh, e-notes, if I can get back to it, there are a variety of, of different topics that I present here. There's a variety of, of pages. Right? But rather than going through every single page, I'm just going to now open up selected pages. And I'm going to show you how I've gone about constructing uh, 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 using tables, etc. So first of all, inserting a main table. Uh, that's fairly straightforward. Right? I would go up to uh, the table function, uh, create a table. Now, this is going to be very important. I found when I create a table with that I usually keep that anywhere between 80 to 90 percent of my screen. And again, the reason I try to make that somewhat limiting is so when students print it off, they don't lose any information. Uh, you can choose to align tables. 
Of course, if this is going to be our main table, it's going to be a one-by-one one table. I don't show the borders. I want the, that table to appear invisible to the student, so I'll create a zero border width. And once I do that, now I've created this main table. Now, next, how do you insert images? For those people who don't have much experience with it, uh, I can simply, uh, for example, let's say I want to insert an image here on the right-hand side that represents an image from this chapter. What I would simply do is I would put the cursor here in front of the learning objectives. And then I would go to Insert Image. Now it's simply just selecting my image using my file system, so trying to be organized here. Here are a series of images that I use for the course. I'm going to insert 14.1b. Now the nice thing about SoftChalk, it'll tell you first about the size of the image. Now it shows me that this fits within the height and width that's acceptable. However, I know that 738 by 610 is probably going to be too large for what I want. So you can start to play around with the width. So I'm going to select a width of 350. I'm then going to choose to align my image. I want to wrap my text around that image. So I'm going to align it to the right. And now hit OK. And now we can see that next to that text, I've inserted an image. And now that text and that image can coexist in the same space. So you can see that's fairly straightforward. I mean, that, that's, as long as you know where your file is, as long as you have sort of a conceptual picture of how you want to set up your page, uh, that's very easy to do. Next part, I'd like to show you how to insert a flash file, in this case my PowerPoint flash file. Again, this is very straightforward. What I'm going to do is just go up to the Insert menu, go to Media, select Flash, since it's in a Swift file. Go to Select My Files. Again, now, uh, having organized the course, all my flash files are in the same folder. So there's my PowerPoint flash file. Now I'm going to be able to set up how large I want that to appear. Uh, uh, with the t uh, main table, 800 by 600 works fairly well. Click OK. And now what I have in there is my PowerPoint. And this is what that flash file will look like. So that's the main page. Now, as far as learning objectives, et cetera, again, when you look at soft chalk, it's just, a, just like an, a, a blank document in which you can just start typing right away. And that's how I've constructed a lot of this text. Next up, again, for a lot of you, uh, just in looking at it, 50% uh, of you use it quite a bit, which means about 50% of us haven't used it. So I'm trying to reach uh, different populations here. So quickly, if you want to uh, insert a text topper, so if you want to define a term, that you may have. So for example, pathogenic. If you want to insert a text popper there, you just highlight the word of interest, go up to insert, select text popper, and then you can uh, uh, insert uh, a text. Uh, right? uh, the ability of a microorganism to make you sick is a, sort of a layman's definition there. And now my text popper has been inserted. Again, here, here, here's what it comes down to. If I'm trying to adopt a new learning technology, there's a certain time commitment, right? And we all agree that time is not something that's always on our side. Whether you teach in the summer, maybe you don't have time. Or if you're trying to do this during a normal semester and you're carrying 18 contact hours. But you can see that everything so far has been fairly straightforward, right? It's your vision, right? How you picture your e-notes to look. That's really the, the, the time it takes, right? Is your investment in being creative and saying, here's how I want to deliver my information. Soft chalk makes the delivery part of it easy, right? And, and, and we're all in, or most of us are in, in, in the teaching. So pedagogically, we all understand the importance of assessment, how to create good materials. So I would offer this, that you're already the experts in the pedagogy. And now becoming an expert in soft chalk is fairly straightforward. The, the time commitment isn't as, uh, as vast as one may think. Uh, quickly, if I want to hyperlink out to a file, uh, that exists on my hard drive or a file that exists out in space, you would simply just go up to the Insert, select Hyperlink. Now, here's the nice thing. I don't have to have this image or this file, whatever I want to hyperlink to. I don't need to have it on the World Wide Web. I could simply go to my hard drive and select a file. And I want to, in this example, select a table. So I want to make this table available. I could simply hit Open. I can choose whether I want or, or not I want to open it in a new window. 
and now I'll get hit OK. Now here's the nice thing about soft chalk. Soft chalk will now take that file and make it part of this lesson uh, file. So I'm going to save, when I save this file, when I go up to File, Save As, and I create a folder for this lesson, automatically that table is going to be inserted right into that folder. So file management becomes very straightforward uh, using soft chalk. So I think that's nice. It's not a table necessarily I want to put within the eNotes because it's rather large, but by hyperlinking it out, I can still deliver that information directly from my hard drive uh, because of the uh, file management of soft chalk. Now here's a big one for advanced users, and here's one I struggled with when I first started making eNotes. How can I insert multiple images uh, uh, in a way that uh, uh, I can stack them together? If I went up to the insert image, uh, function, what, I, what you find is you cannot put images very easily side by side. So I'm going to use a table today. So I'm going to go up to create a table. Now I'm going to want a, a single row, right? But I'm going to want three columns within that row. That's because I want to upload three images here. Now table width. So now I got to think. I'm already working in a table that I've set here. So now I have to think, what percentage of this table that I've set up is going to take, I'm going to take up with my images. So let's set that to 70%. Now again, I don't like uh, to, to show these tables, so I'm going to collect zero for the border width. And now, as I go down, there's my table of interest. Now let's say I, I don't want my table of interest on the left-hand side. Maybe I want it centered. I can certainly do that just by hitting the center function. Or maybe I want to wrap text around it. If I do, then I select left or right, and that's going to allow me to wrap text. But in this case, I'm just interested in, in uploading multiple images in a single row. So now I have my uh, three cells. Now each cell works independently of one another. So I want to upload an image into this cell. So I'm just going to go insert image. Again, managing my files, 14.1a. I'm going to select. Now that's going to be too large. If I want to have three images in a single row, a width and a height uh, 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 is going to be too large there. So I'm going to play around. And that's this sort of trial and error. How large do I want it to look? But I'm going to keep it at a height of about 208. Now I've inserted it. Now go to the next cell quickly, do the same thing. Again, now I can keep everything at that same height. So now 208 becomes the number I want to hit. So now you see I can have two images side by side of the same height, sort of working seamlessly within my eNotes without worrying about how am I going to align them using just the insert image function. And this is the beauty of tables. Now for the uh, sake of Derek, time, Derek, yes, let sir. me uh, interrupt for just a moment. We have a lot of questions coming in, okay. and I'm not responding to them, but I just want to ensure everyone that I will get to them in a few moments when you finish your your uh, your presentation. So okay, go for it. Now we I have about four I have about four uh, three three or four minutes left here. I don't want to I want to leave uh, room for question and answers. Now here's the nice thing about the third cell. What if I want to in include a um, a YouTube video? Right, I want to insert a YouTube video next to those images. Well, there's two ways to do that. I can go insert widget. And using now the code in which YouTube provides me, I can simply paste that code into that cell. And now I can have not only images in a single row, I can have images and videos. But now I know SoftChalk will appreciate this. The great new thing about uh, version 5, and I know it will be there in version 6, is the avail uh, availability of, of the media search. So I want to just quickly show that. Now, I want to uh, uh, present a, a video on tetanus. Let's say tetanus is a topic that I'm interested in. So I, now what I can do is I can use the media library to search for tetanus in a variety of locations. I can search within Flickr. Uh, YouTube is a nice one. Wikipedia. Some people may use Merlot here. It's certainly a resource that I can search just having to do with that topic. So I'm going to choose YouTube, and I'm going to search. Now, once I've searched, I've come up with a series of, of tetanus-related uh, animations in which I can include. So here's a nice one, tetanus, the silent killer. Right? 
Now the nice thing is you can go to its location. I'm not going to do that now for the sake of time. But you can go to your, the location. You can watch it, preview it, see if it's appropriate. And then if it is appropriate, I can simply now click the Insert button. And now that YouTube video has inserted itself into my third cell. And now when students go out to it, I know I can't show videos, but hopefully they'll be able to at least see the YouTube, uh, the characteristic YouTube look here. Now once I go out to it, now we can see the YouTubes, which they can watch already embedded within these e-notes. So I don't just have to give them a link. I can actually have them view the video, go back, look at the text, etc. So it's, it's very easy to use tables to organize and then very easy to use that media library function to find content for your e-notes. So again, we keep talking about the time investment. Think about the amount of time I just saved by having SoftChalk do the search for me. So with that, I know we're a little bit crunched on time. Uh, I'd like to stop there since there are so many questions. And then if we have time at the end, I, I would like to show you maybe one other item. Okay, well, thank you. You covered a lot of material, and there's a lot of questions. Let okay. me sort of let's see if we can get a few of them taken care of very quickly. Um, one one of our read, one of our attendees suggested that an iSpring alternative might be to upload a PowerPoint into Google Docs and then embed the Google Docs uh, as a widget, a learning object into uh, the that's plot. Great. In, into, that's an, another thing people have done. Um, somebody asked if Camtasia presentations can be both used in SoftChalk and your LMS, and yes. That, that, that isn't the problem. Um, yeah, can, I, can I speak to that sure. since I use Camtasia? Too? Yeah, certainly you can. Uh, uh, I, I record Camtasia lectures as well. You can upload them as, as Swift files or as movie files. Uh, the one thing you lose if you do put it into SoftChalk is some of the control and some of the scorm, scoring. So the LMS, I think, is it, it, to deliver the lecture works well in a Camtasia lecture. But if you want some of that assessment, I think the LMS is maybe a better place for that. OK. Um, let's see. There was a, a conversation about whether or not iSpring, getting back to that, provides for narrated PowerPoints, or just convert the PowerPoint as they are. Uh, I haven't worked with uh, doing that kind of audio, although I, I believe, just uh, based on my limited usage, it does have a, a, a record audio a function, but if yes, someone that, else has used it, they may be able to. That's my memory as well. I haven't yeah. used it, but I downloaded it and kind of played with it. So, yes. Um, and um, let's see. The um, there's questions about copyright materials and all yeah. that. And let me just say that the copyright is not, you know, the copyright issues you will have to deal with independent of how you present them. Just, you know, it's fair use will handle the fact that if you're using it in a learning management system and it's behind an ID and passcode, that gives, uh, you know, educators some flexibility. And can um, I speak to that as well? Because, uh, so what I did is I contacted the, the textbook rep and the, and the publisher, and I asked them for use of uh, images and tables uh, behind the learning management system. And so if it's password protected, uh, this is certainly uh, uh, permissible. When you deliver it in a non-password protected way, like a faculty website, that's when you may uh, uh, come upon some of the fair use issues that we talked about. So I always recommend, or would recommend, contacting uh, the publisher and making sure that everything is acceptable. Uh, somebody would like you to talk about the about um, open-ended questions associated with case yes. studies. How you handle those? Great. Uh, that that's the one thing I, I did want to get to. Uh, Again, online assessment is very easy to do with some of the basic types of questions. But how can you uh, use essays? So here's a nice example of I like to use case studies for my microbiology class. So now I've given them the scenario. I've provided the question. So now I'm going to go up to insert quiz popper and uh, uh, make it an essay question. So now I will just say answer 1 through 5. Click OK. All right, so now how am I going to grade that? How can I get the scores? Well, now, what's nice about SoftChalk is they give you many options in order to collect this data. And so what I didn't show you is I have a variety of assessments embedded within these e-notes. Uh, and so before I publish uh, my lesson, I uh, can do one of two things. 
you can certainly go to SCORM properties. Now if you use an LMS and you use the SCORM properties, what you can do is make it a single attempt and then the score would upload directly into your gradebook. But that doesn't work for open-ended questions, right? That works well for uh, where you can predetermine the answer. So now in order for me to collect open-ended questions, what I've done is I've gone up to properties, you select lesson reporting, and now you can do one of two things, and I've selected both. You can have the students uh, print off uh, uh, their score summary, uh, which will just give you sort of the uh, basic overview of, of the multiple choice. What I like is the email completion results and the submit to score tracker. So now if I set it to email completion results, I just simply provide my email address. If I select submit the score tracker, I select the course I want to assign the lesson to. Now let me quickly show you then what it looks like when I get it or collect it via email. So here I've set up my own folder in my inbox to collect these lessons. Here's what the, uh, uh, it looks like. It gives me the date, the time, uh, the name of the individual that they input. Uh, how many points uh, they got out of the attempts, how much time they spent on it, and then it gives me essay responses. So simply now what I do is I look to see who submitted it to me. I just select that forward button, and now, it's my score here, now I can simply grade it over email and then send it back to the person with their final score. And so that makes open-ended questions, I think, very easy or very straightforward. Uh, quickly, if you want to use Score Tracker, which I think is another nice uh, uh, product offer, or I shouldn't even call it a product, but it's another nice service offered by Soft Chalk. If I could spell, we would be in good shape, all right. Now, within uh, 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 Soft Chalk uh, uh, website, we have here Score Tracker. You can certainly uh, log in. I meant to have this open before I got started. I apologize. Now this is not slow, this is slow because of my network. I'm not going to say it's the, the score tracker that's slow to upload here. But what, it, what the score tracker does while we're waiting here is it keeps your scores and you can download it as an Excel file. And then you could take that Excel file and integrate it right into your gradebook. So you don't need an LMS to deliver the assessments. You don't need to teach online to do online assessments. By using things like the score tracker or the email function, you can collect the scores and you can collect assessments uh, in a variety of ways. So I think that's just going to take a little bit of time here. See, so here we go. Um, let me quickly go to microbiology here. I apologize here that they showed a, showed a student score. See, why don't we, uh, we can move forward here. But you can download or email the scores to yourself. You can download it as a, an Excel file. So it's really useful for online assessment. Okay, I think uh, a really interesting question being asked um, and I'm surprised only one person asked it, is what is your time structure for creating a course such as, such, such as you're, you're showing today? It's certainly well, if you ask, if you ask me, I, I think it, it didn't take much time. If you ask my wife, it took forever. <laughs> but I spent, I spent my winter break, and I would say it took me probably six hours per chapter, six to seven hours a chapter to make those e-notes, at least get them to a point where I think they're, they're good, and then, of course, you're always tweaking it. Uh, so for an entire course, uh, I think I prepared around 14, 15 chapters. So, uh, you know, it, it, it was a, a, a bit of a time investment. I, but, but to me, the, the feedback from the students has made it worth it. And I think uh, that's what's important. There, there was a conversation, and this may be our last question, and it may not be that you're the best person to talk about, but there are questions yeah. about using tables and accessibility because tables have historically had a bad rap for um, creating accessible content. Have you, have you looked into that? I know that we've done some work with it, but I'm not the expert in that. Have you so so that? if we could just clarify what, what is meant by accessing the content within tables. That's what I'm trying to. Right. You know, how, how will a screen reader handle it? You know, what kind of information will they yeah. be able to see? Will they will they will they jump over? And I guess and and, I, and honestly, that is is not something that I've had experience with. So I haven't uh, looked into that. So I can't really speak to that. One of the things I can say is that we're doing a series of accessibility webinars uh, with Jane Jaro, 
And she did a, a, an innovator session for us in February, and we have that on our website. And she addressed the issues of tables. So I would point people to that if, if we will. So I'm actually going to take the screen back, because I want to okay. point people to a couple of things. Um, and let's see if I get a couple of questions that I can ask. Now, a couple, well, as I'm transitioning, one other question about PowerPoint. They want to know whether or not you can actually just put a PowerPoint file into SoftChalk. And I think the, there are several ways to put PowerPoint files into SoftChalk, but one of them is not just to put it in. You know, so you may want to address how, how, how that works. Yeah, I, I, there's no way to really put the entire power. A PPT or PPTX file cannot be uploaded and hosted on SoftChalk. Now, one of the things you can do, is, let's say you have a faculty web page, is you can upload your PowerPoint to your faculty web page and then within SoftChalk hyperlink to that address. So then when your students click on the link, it'll take them to that part of your server which hosts the PowerPoint. So that would be a way, if you didn't want to convert it to Flash, if you wanted to keep it as a PPT file uh, or a PDF file, then you would have to use an external server and then link within SoftChalk out to that file. Okay, I'm having trouble with my, um, with my desktop for some reason. I'm trying to take the... Um, I'm not sharing now. Once you've given me control, I'm not going to give it up, Steve. <laughs> And so I'm having trouble actually taking the control back, which is rather interesting, because I've never had this problem before. Let me see what I can do. Uh, there we go. So let me uh, make me the organizer, and I'm going to show my, my screen again. There we go. And just point out that there's a lot of ways for you to get more information about SoftChalk. The Innovators in Online Learning series, as I've talked about, is there. We have several sessions coming up, and every one of the past ones for the last several years have been recorded and archived. If you want to know more about SoftChalk, just about SoftChalk, go to our weekly demonstrations. If you want to know more about tables, we have a short course specifically on tables. So that's one of the issues you can, uh, you can have. We, d we do half days training that online and actually face-to-face. We have you know, mini tutorials, so you can get just-in-time kind of training about certain basic questions. We've got excellent documentation on our website, and we've got our lesson challenge. And I mentioned that Derek is one of the winners of this year's lesson challenge, and I just want to point that out to you. So having run out of time, our hour is up. Let me just say that if you want more information about soft chalk, um, and want to, you know, just can't wait to buy it, contact our sales team. If you want more information, you want to chat with me, just send me an email at steve at softchalk. And, of course, Derek, if you want to have information about Derek or from Derek, that is his email address. And I'm going to leave this on the screen for several moments.